Okay. And hopefully we'll get some folks joining us. And then uh, this is the first time I'm using this keynote, so. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so I know it's all in practice. So um, welcome everyone who hopefully joins us in the Zoom room, but if you're joining us on Facebook Live, uh, I'm Clementine Bordeaux. Um, welcome you on behalf of Racing Magpie. And if you're joining us for this first winter camp presentation or this last winter camp presentation, right? Today's the solstice. So um, we're all excited for spring to be here, but we're here with Ray Janais who will be presenting his talk, This Isn't Art. We're very privileged to have him with us tonight. If you don't know, Racing Magpie is a Lakota-centric arts and culture organization that was founded in 2015 in Rapid City here in Mini Luzaha Otuwahe. And we center the Lakota practice of being a good relative in everything that one does. Our work is focused on elevating and amplifying the ongoing work of community-based artists and culture bearers in the region. And as part of being a good relative, the program reimagines the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining the de deeper cultural roots and the way that Lakota people do things and how we interact with the world around us. While these events are open to the public, we always uplift and amplify community members from the Ocheti Shakoin nations as both presenters and attendees. We also want to thank the Bush Foundation for their generous sponsorship of this program. And if you want to find out more ways to sponsor or contribute to the work that Racing Mike Pie does, you can visit our website or you can stop by our new space here in Rapid City. You could drop off a donation or share out our information. And of course, you can always support our artists and our creatives and our culture bearers um, like Ray, you could buy their work, you can share out their social medias, um, and you can support, support the artists directly. Um, if you're joining us in the Zoom room, you can um, post a comment or question in the chat. I'll be monitoring that. Or you can post a comment or question on our Facebook Live, and I'll make sure that our presenter sees it. So without further explanation or delay, I would like to turn it over to Ray Janice. Yeah. All right, let me see how I can do this. Uh, okay, let me share this. All right, can you see my screen? Yes? Yes, I can see the okay. screen. Is it the full screen or no? I can see, I can, okay, there's the full screen. All right, okay. Cool. All right. So <clears throat> my name is Ray Denise. I'm from uh, Kyle, South Dakota. Um, I guess uh, my presentation today is called This Is an Art. And it's uh, kind of a funny stab at a, uh, uh, some people that were like saying graphic design isn't art or uh, uh, doing stuff through the computer to make art isn't art. And I wanted to kind of push back on those um, stereotypes and um, kind of explain what I do and show you some of the stuff that I do. All right. Why did it just show that one? Probably because I didn't start at the beginning, huh? Okay. First time using Keynote. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so uh, this is a cool project I did. Uh, I wanted to do um, kind of like a family crest, uh, family shield type uh, emblem. I, started off by doing some research on uh, some of my ancestors and some of my uh, uh, grandpas and uh, on my Iron Cloud side. And I found this cool one. Uh, I, my Auntie Carmen showed me this uh, cool picture of my grandpa Ike. He was a baby, he was wearing uh, his regalia. And I noticed he had this uh, circle with these four dots uh, on his uh, beadwork. 
and I went and I talked to some of my family from over there. This comes from um, uh, Knife Chief would paint this on his horse and he'd go into battle or when he would go to, into other camps, he would have this, this circle with these four dots. So I wanted to do, I wanted it to take it a step further and to represent how big our family has gotten. And so I put kind of that, that initial shield in the middle with the four teepees around it. And then I did the red and blue to represent the balance, whether it's a good day or a, or a hard day, that no matter what, that we persevered as a family and as a people and that we're still gonna persevere. And so this would be the intro to my like portfolio. I, would, I put these images on my portfolio. I made this through uh, Illustrator and uh, some of the, the type I kind of customized and fit to me. And uh, I, I, this is just one thing that like, I think it would be art, like if you just seen the image by itself. And I hope other people see it like that too. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, early in my career, I used to do music, used to do hip hop music, and uh, when I did when I did hip hop music, I'd always want <clears throat> album covers that I see like in stores. I grew up in the CD era, and so I wanted like I wanted my stuff to look as good as everyone else is in the stores. And at the time, there wasn't really too many people that were making album covers. They were either hand drawn. You know, photocopied, uh, but nobody was really taking the time to like Photoshop anything. So I, I went out and I bought myself Photoshop and I taught myself basically how to use Photoshop. So I came out, created like hooligans. I mean, that was like the first uh, uh, album I did with Ilda. He made all the beats for that. And then I made another album called Warrior Cubs. And, uh, and then my uh, one of my later albums uh, with uh, Kyle Mesteth, he, uh, he does uh, a code of skateboarding and ground control and um, Pine Ridge. And we did an album kind of like a, a Halloween themed album called Hooligan Villain. And all of these images I made, I took like the Warrior Cubs one is like the, the Chicago Cubs emblem, but just tweaked to fit me and, and how I was feeling on that album. Uh, so these are some of the early, early works that I that I did, what started me off my career in art. And then uh, I went back to school. Uh, I, I was, I was uh, taking classes for IT at OLC. And I, wanted, uh, I, I really didn't really want to go into IT. Like I, I had a job as a computer tech and it didn't, I didn't like it. It was like very repetitive stuff and didn't fit me. And I seen that while she was offering a graphic arts program and uh, I really wanted to try it out. It was stuff that I was doing with Photoshop and I thought, cool, it'll help me better my skills on Photoshop. And so I went back to school and started studying under Marty Tubles Jr. And one highlight of my, my uh, college career was I got an Addy um, uh, Student Award for uh, this image, to, uh, Chief Bigfoot. I did this image and uh, it was, uh, I always people portray Chief Bigfoot when he was dying on his, uh, on his last walk to Pine Ridge. And I wanted to do something where uh, I uplifted him and I uplifted our people and didn't want to put no poverty images out there. And I thought it'd been cool to, to get a picture of him when he was young. Uh, I did this, was sketched out in, and it's a program you can download on your iPad. You get a pen and you could just draw and then uh, I took the background images and made the GMH in Illustrator. And Ed Feet kind of represent his hard walk. 
is basically represents that image that everybody sees, but not with him. And so I did this one and it won the award. And it's, uh, I, I titled it Lakota Legend Series One because I plan to have images of uh, a bunch of different chiefs and people that I admire. And, and I, I kind of had this image of like, uh, when I was a kid, used to have uh, painting or posters of uh, Michael Jordan or like Allen Iverson and people that I looked up to. If we had posters of of our our chiefs, our our important people in our tribe, uh, and I thought that would have been something cool. So I made this, and it's a it's a poster. So I do have prints of these uh, to to sell if people are interested in it. And this one is is cool. I, I like this one. It's kind of like what made me feel like okay, I'm I'm officially an artist. Uh, I. I went out and made something digitally and and it got an award. So yeah. All right, let me see what's going on here. Okay. Uh, another thing that I do, I do logos. Uh, I really I like when I took my college classes and uh, we had um, a logo design class and they had to give us these briefs and we'd have to talk about uh, what, what this logo means, what they want and what they, and kind of like put their vision and make it into reality. And so like, I would start out and like I would practice and do a bunch of different little briefs. And so I start to make my own logos. Uh, first fellas is uh, the crew that I'm with. They, they do uh, music, we do art, do skateboarding with ground control, and we do video, uh, video game streaming with Lakota Born. So it's like a bunch of round, like well-rounded people in this that do a bunch of different things, and we all collaborate with each other and help uh, lift each other up. We're all indigenous. Uh, uh, Kyle's from uh, Oglala Lakota. I'm Oglala Lakota, and then uh, Lakota Born. He's a uh, he's Cheyenne. Uh, so uh, Eagle Butte, so we're all Lakota boys and we're all trying to push natives forward in, in the digital age. So the first one is First Fellas, that's our logo. And then I got uh, I got to do a cool logo for Natiani Means, his AIM logo. He has some uh, apparel right now. Uh, so I kind of put my own twist on it. He, he sent me a, a thing what he wanted and I kind of came up with that. and. And uh, I think it turned out real cool. I did a, a album cover for Basil, uh, his new album, Dakushni. And I, I wanted to do like a digital tag of it. And so I, I told him, I said, hey, I'll just make a big digital tag and you could make it a sticker or you could put it on a shirt and do whatever you want with it. And so I came up with this, with this concept, kind of paying homage to growing up in the hip hop scene. And then, uh, so that one came out cool. Another one I did for Not Tiani Means is his Resist logo. And I thought of it, uh, uh, Lakota Born was the one that he came up with the, the idea, the, the type. And, and then I was like, oh, we should put lightning on it. Cause he kind of is like an activist. And I said, he kind of, he lives that hard life of a warrior. And so we came up with this and then I wanted to like use like I was inspired by like 80s uh, metal like their album covers and how it, like how they like looked like almost like scary uh, so I kind of wanted to put that vibe out there and and, and uh, the it was it's crazy because it's supposed to be oh you you want whatever one you want we'll put it on you could give it to you and give it to a shirt and he wanted all four of them like this and it kind of turned out cool. Like, he wanted all of them, not just one iteration of it. I did a logo, this is more of a feminine logo. Um, uh, my sister-in-law, she wanted a, she started a, um, uh, her own photography business and it's called XB Photography. And she wanted it uh, kind of like some flowers and I kind of put the lens cap like, so it looks like it's a lens cap. 
and then she picked the colors that she wanted her color scheme and I think it really turned out great and she's an indigenous artist as well and uh I kind of like uh uh, oh, this next one too, The Prairie Winds. This one was a mock-up that I did. I seen the new Prairie Wind logo and I thought it didn't look that great. And I thought, oh, wow, well, I should try to see if I could do something to, to make it look better and like make it represent us. Because I feel like I get the idea of like, it's wind, it's how do you draw wind? But then it's like a horse, and like I thought, no, that that designer is not indigenous. Like, <laughs> I, I I felt like I could do better than that. <laughs> so this is my if Perry Wins is on here watching, like hook me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then uh, let's see what else we got. That's first time using Keynote. Oh, Lakota skate tape. Uh, um, Kyle wanted me to come up with a cool little design for his. Uh, He's making a skate tape video, and uh, I thought that was, he wanted like he sent me an image of a kid uh, jumping out of the bowl, and then he said I just want it to look like it's just a a stencil, so I, I took the image and made it look like a stencil. I thought that one came out cool, and then I did my rock boy logo. I did these cool uh, whaling logos. Uh, <laughs> it's a IO for Indigenous Creatives. And it's a, it's kind of like an app where people could come together and like share ideas. And and the guy that came up with it, his name's Waylon, and he said he had this whole theory that we come from the stars, so we're aliens, and he had this whole spiel about what he wanted. And I was like, cool, like I'll do it. I'll do something something fun with it. So I came up with that, and then I came up with his character. And it's like the indigenous alien. I thought that would have been funny. Uh, yeah, so those are, so those are um, the two that I did for Waylands. And then I did this piece uh, for Opdao Chunku Therapeutic Counseling. And it's supposed to uh, be a, a healing center for um, teens. And uh, their, their concept of the cool is like a, a, a bridge to healing. So like on this on the where you're at you come across that bridge and then you're supposed to be healed and and actually understand your feelings and and so i kind of made the bottom of the thing looking like it's a bridge and, and it's a path to go across and to to heal yourself and and uh i thought that came out pretty cool and these are all done uh, in illustrator um they're all vector files so you could blow them up as big as you want or you could put them on anything you want. Um, so yeah, so these are these are some of the logos that I've done. A uh, couple album covers that I've done too. Uh, I did Lakota Born's beat tape album. He made a beat tape for uh, his stream. Uh, I, I never I never knew that you couldn't use um, mute like anybody's music, and when you streamed online, like you'd get copyrighted if you use like. I, I don't know Ice Cube or Tupac or anybody you get you get copyrighted and they take your stream down and so he made his own beats to play while he's playing whatever video games he's playing and so he asked me to use a or make his album cover and he, his beat tape was like a 80 synth wave kind of hip hop and he said I want it to be like like uh, Back to the Future like uh, I want to be coming out of a storm and like it, it's like it's like going back over to Black Hills, and so I was like, "Yeah, cool, I'll make it." And so I thought, uh, Lakota born six eight, he's a big dude. So I thought I should get a big old car, like a big Lincoln, and then chop the top off of it, and then like make him where he's still too big for it, like he's looking over the windshield because he's a big dude. <laughs> and I thought it, I thought it came out cool. He really liked that. He thought it was funny that he that he looks like he's like way way too big for it and then uh uh like one thing that i like is back to the future too whenever they convert it to uh hover and it could fly so i thought that was cool i did that piece uh the next one i did was Bazil's album cover um for doc ushni uh he came to me with his uh idea if he wanted to do an album 
where he uh his album concepts really cool i really like it it's uh it's how we're common people we're not nobody and and when he sent me uh the 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 album it was like in the rough form i said i want to listen to it while i while i make it and so i was listening to this album taking a uh, inspiration from songs. So he has a song on there called Barbed Wire, where he talks about being indigenous and you can't just roam like you, and be nomadic like you used to be, that these ranchers put on barbed wire uh, to stop us from moving and to stop the buffalo from moving. And so I kind of put that in there. <clears throat> I put the, he talked about the um, residential boarding schools I put the kids in there and that and that could represent kids nowadays too because it is still uh, it's still hard and a struggle to get kids even in school with with COVID and the pandemic on a reservation like I know being on a school board and, and trying to get school to function in some normality is difficult so I played on it in those both ways um, he had an album called Coyote and uh I, I wanted to pay homage to what he's done. And he had another one called Ectomi. So at the very bottom, you'll see a spider web and you'll see a coyote. But that has a, it's like a double entendre because he has a song on there called Scorpion Death Drop. When I was growing up, WCW and WWE was like, like really famous. I ever really, like every kid wanted to watch it on Monday night, you'd go home. You run run home at six to watch it, <clears throat> and you want to be watching the NWO and the Wolf Pack. So I kind of made it like uh, that uh, Scott um, Scott Hall slime kind of looking. Uh, so I like to get the white drips behind the coyote, and then um, he talks about Christy Nome and the pipeline. So I, I threw the the state capital in there, but then I threw a teepee in there. And I threw it like way bigger than the Capitol because I, I want it to represent like it. And we were here before before uh, this government was here and that I kind of wanted to play on the, we're still not represented in anything. Like they were still looked over in everything that in South Dakota was. And so like in his album, when he talks about it, I wanted to to like, I wanted to, to, to if you looked at the album, you kind of have a, a feel of what's in this album. The metal art represents singing and he's a rapper. So he's using his voice to, to um, get his message across. And he's a beat maker. So I put a beat machine on there on the other side. If you look real close on his shirt, there's lyrics written all over his shirt from his album. And then I, I put the graffiti tag on his shirt too. And I told him, I was like, I could make this digitally and it would be cool. It would uh, it would live in on the computer and, and in the internet age, it would live in there. But I, I wanted to take it a step further and I wanted to paint it, like hand paint it. And so I found this 12 by 12 panel board and painted the whole image on there and then uploaded it digitally. So now he can have an actual um, album uh, to take home, hang on his wall, and remember, like, this is where I was at. This is the project I did, and uh, I think it turned out great. Uh, another one, uh, another cool thing with this is this is going to be, uh, a, a, we blew it up to like 40 by 40. Uh, Hennepin Theater is going to um, display it on the it's like a, a gallery, but it's like the, the window to the street. And there's going to be a QR code for people to go out, scan the cords, and it takes you right to this album. Uh, so I thought that was a cool thing that Hennepin Theater did with me. Uh, how about Indigenous artists? Uh, so this is my, uh, these are like uh, <clears throat> Procreate digital works, or digital paintings. Uh, I wanted to pay homage to my cousin, Trevor. He passed away, he was diabetic. He passed away uh, a couple of years ago now. And uh, his uh, Lakota name was Gentle Bear. And I thought it would have been 
funny and cool to like instead of just drawing Trevor I like I wanted to like make him a bear and like how he was like just chilling and enjoying life and so that was one piece that I did uh, another piece that I did was my wolf shunka and uh, this was before uh, NFTs really start to like become super popular and like I would draw my characters like like uh, shoulders up and now it's like that's the craze is the shoulders up and put a little animation on it so I was thinking uh, this one I think I'm gonna move forward and keep using it and and make it in different styles to keep it at like the NFT style here's some more uh, that I did uh, I was I was addicted to this game for a little bit <laughs> Among Us uh, it, uh, I, I don't know if you anybody ever played it but it's like uh, somebody is the bad guy and you got to figure out who the bad guy is so you got to do your tasks and uh, anyways I, I was super hyped on this game and it was it's like a good strategic game and so I thought I want to make my own character and it, so I put the, the buffalo head and his little arrows on his back. In the game, you have a knife. And like I thought, oh, it would be cool to make him a, a big knife for my guy. And, um, whenever they find out you're the, the villain, there's this big image behind you of like flames. And so I thought, I'm, I'm going to recreate this and just put my own spin on it. Uh, this other one is Chief Bigfoot again. This one is actually... Uh, mixed media project that I was doing. It's a paint, it's a, a picture of him, but it's it's drawn with a acrylic, uh, I don't know, alcohol ink, acrylic and India ink. And then I took the image and then digitally uploaded it. And then I recreated a background for it and then tweaked it up a bit. The other one says Tonka real big on it. And uh, I kind of took that off and wanted to, to make another iteration of it. And I plan to make this one animated as well. And I used uh, geometric shapes like the star quilt real subtly in the back. I thought that one really came out cool. Um, okay, let me see what's going on here. Okay, cool. And these are two more characters that I did. Uh, I really like drawing the on um, Procreate. It's like fast and it's like it's like almost easy. Like whenever I draw on a paper analog style, I get hung up on making it perfect. Where on iPads I, I can draw as fast as I want. And if I'm like if I draw his head funny or if I draw his face funny, I could still tweak stuff and, and fix it later on whereas if i was analog it would it wouldn't be like that i'd have to like sketch it out then i'd probably ink it after i sketch it out and whereas on the computer it's like so much faster to get my ideas out and then uh bobby buzzard i uh, thought would have been funny because like i always see the the old greeks with their um uh what are they called again Laurels, yeah, they're laurels on their head. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna put some wings on him, on his head and make him look like modern. The piercings all over uh, uh, would be cool to make him with like super big eyes and like like remember how hawks? They say hawks have real good vision. I, I kind of like, well, he's a bird. I wanted to make him have like real good vision. So that, that was my idea behind that. And then why what Tahashi? I always have I always feel like whenever you're talking, like you call your cousins up and they're like uh, they always hit you like, hey, Colin, what's wrong? <laughs> so I wanted to do like a, a little homage to my cousins. And uh, so I did this one. And uh, I kind of like uh, I didn't I didn't realize it at the time, but it kind of came out as a pair because I did the Bobby Buzzard one first and then uh, this one like I must have been really feeling this color at the time and it came out cool. And if you notice too, his necklace still has the, uh, the four dots to represent my family. Uh, here's some more cool pieces. 
another video game that I really like is called Brahalla. Uh, it's basically Smash Bros, but it, it's like a, uh, it's kind of like a knockoff version of it, really. But it's on like PC and Xbox. I think it's on PlayStation too. But uh, I thought it would be funny to create like Lakota characters, so I did the Wanaki, and then uh, that boy Skoden. And uh, I, I thought it would have been hilarious if like, what if I could get these characters into the, into the game? And so I was like, this is my this is my little spiel to try to get them in the game. And uh, I think they came out cool. Uh, I, I always like, you always see your, your uncles, they always have those uh, old track suits uh, from like the eighties. So I kind of wanted to make Skoda and have like a track suit on and then, uh, of course, his turquoise jewelry. I think this one turned out cool too. I like how Wanagi is like a ghost, but his fist and feet like look like flames out of him. But yeah, I like those ones too. Two fun projects. And hopefully I can get him into Brawlhalla. That'd be fun. Um, this one I called Ia. Uh, uh, I like how it... Uh, it represents like my family. This is all digital. This is all done on uh, Photoshop. Uh, the man on the uh, right, uh, he's uh, Antoine Janice. Where all the Janices come from is this guy. He uh, built up Fort Collins area and the Denver area. And he took a bunch of Lakotas and Arapahoes with him. Uh, the guy on the bottom left with the headdress on, that uh, touches the clouds and he's like like seven foot <clears throat> and so all of these guys were like he, uh, Antoine was an interpreter and uh, what I think is cool is uh, we went out to Fort Collins we seen his cabin where he where he where he uh, not where he lived but it, it, uh, they moved his cabin to a museum but where, where he where his house is and then actually got to hear like I got a book of on him and hear and read like what what he did and and when what he was like trying to accomplish and so a lot of the, like Lakotas were going down helping build the Denver area and Fort Collins area and whenever they uh, said uh, all the natives have to go back to the res uh, his wife was uh, Mary Red Cloud and instead of just sending his wife and his kids back to the res and him still doing his thing in, in Fort Collins in Denver, he came back with them, which I think is really cool. Like to be like, oh no, I'm I'm Lakota now, and I kind of like to me it like uh, uh, whenever I think about like our kinship and being Lakota is not all oh, your blood quantum or uh, anything where they try to rate our our nativeism or being Lakota, it, no, it's, it, we we are a kinship system, and so I really like that he he still went with his family and, and came back to Pine Ridge and didn't just leave it, leave them for just to stay in Fort Collins. So I always think that this is a cool story. The hand <laughs> represents my uncle Smoke. Uh, and being when we were young and it was hard to communicate with him, we always had to um, speak sign language to him. So I did the sign language for Jay for Jenny. So I thought that was pretty cool, pretty fun project. Um, another project I had. This is a mixed media painting. Uh, I, I thought it was funny that that summer, whenever that lady got her pants ripped off by the by the Tatanka. <laughs> And so <laughs> I wanted to like do my take of it, but not like so obvious, like blatantly obvious where it's like the buffalo with the pants on his horn. Yeah, I kind of want it to be like a uh, more poppy take to it. So I call this one Kashin Tatanka Yotaka. And, uh, and this is a painting that I sold at the uh, Black Hills Indian Art Market. And like, it sold like soon as like, I put it out. I, I, I thought it was gonna, me, I didn't think anybody was gonna think that it was that amazing, but 
it was cool to have somebody appreciate it the way I appreciated it. And then I, I wanted to paint uh, Chief Sitting Bull, like almost like pop art, like real bright colors. And uh, I think it came out cool. It's a really cool piece. And then I wanted to leave the Im uh, images of um, the wood on the side and, and uh, just to show you like, hey, you don't need the most expensive stuff or the most expensive materials or a big old canvas. You could just, whatever you have is what you have and make some art out of it. That was a cool one. This is another one I did uh, for that same art market. It's called Independent Wea. And uh, I thought, I found this image uh, searching, uh, um, I think it was through the library, the Owasi Library. And I have never seen uh, a relative, like a female relative on a horse, like a picture by herself. And I, I kind of like, to me, it like represented like my mom, like being a single mom and going to wrap it on Highway 44 and going to get business done and coming back to Kyle and, and still taking care of us kids. So I thought this would have been, uh, if this was my mom a long time ago, like I kind of like, I linked it like that in my head anyways. And then, uh, so I did that. I made it real bright and poppy and the blue and yellow is supposed to represent Kyle, our little one, where we're from. And then I uh, found these cool uh, um, flowers, uh, paper flowers. So I wanted it to, to represent the like feminine and, uh, and uh, women in general. So like my mom, so I, I think this one came out cool. Um, yeah, and 44 is uh, the highway that uh, from Kyle, you get to Rapid City. And this is a mixed media piece as well, acrylic paper. And um, I think I used uh, alcohol markers and in India ink. Uh, yeah, all of that good stuff. And so uh, I got a through uh, after I graduated uh, college with uh, graphic design, I got a, a internship and it's uh, through uh, Hennepin uh, Theater Trust and uh, um, all my relations gallery, uh, NACTI out of Minnesota. And uh, I, what I did, what the program was to do is to bring indigenous people, uh, digital designers, uh, bring awareness to them and put our artwork out on billboards and in galleries. And these are two pieces that were uh, for Native American Heritage Month. We uh, got together and we were um, spitballing ideas on what we were gonna bring to the table, what we wanted to do. And a lot of my colleagues were talking about, oh, I'm gonna do these uh, uh, picture of our ancestor. And then another one was MMIW and these are all great. And I was like, of course I'm last to, to decide what I wanna do. And I was like, I wanna represent uh, modern day uh, people and what they're doing and, and to show that because the cohort's called we are still here and to show people that we're still here and we're still doing something and so the top one is of a Brazil and his music and uh, this was before he asked me this kind of what led up to him asking me to do his album cover I reached out to him and said, hey, can I just do a billboard of you and, and use the image of you and draw it? And he said, sure. And I said, uh, I said, you don't have to worry about anything. I'll just, I'll do everything. And he's like, yeah, he's all down for it. And so I put this piece together. He paints his face whenever he, he uh, raps on stage. And uh, like, it almost reminds me of like warriors when they go back and when they're going into battle. And so I thought, man, this would be so cool. And so I made it look like real sinister and kind of in your face that if you're like driving in Minneapolis and you see this on the billboard, you're like, what is that? Like, who is that guy? And hopefully send more people to look for him and who he is. And uh, yeah, he's really, he really does inspire me. Uh, his albums, uh, Dakushni especially, uh, I 
I think it's a great, a great album that if you're native in South Dakota, like it, it really touches home on a lot of issues and especially me being a, 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 a hip hop artist as well. Like, I'm like, I wish I wrote that. I wish that I did that. It's a really great album. Uh, the other one is uh, my cousin, Marvie Ferguson. Um, she, she's a jingle dress dancer. And uh, I think I think she was either uh, Miss Oglala Nation, like Junior Miss, I think it was, um, a few years back. And so I wanted to represent her like as a feminine side to it. And she said that she dances when she dances. It's like she's dancing for all of the people, and uh, she wants to inspire other little girls to stay walking on the red road and uh, stay off drugs and alcohol and and basically live like uh, a proud woman. And so I, I thought that was so cool. And whenever I talked to her, and I went out and took pictures of her and the images we came up with. And uh, I thought it came out great. And there's the other billboard that I did for uh, Native American Heritage Month in Minneapolis. And these are all on digital um, billboards. So it was cool that it like, it would cycle through. So it like play this one for like 10 seconds and it'd go to somebody else's and it'd go to, to Brazil's. And there was uh, four of us that had images up for Native American Heritage Month. And uh, I think it went all of November and I think half of December too as well, which is pretty cool. And then uh, April and May this month and next month at Hennepin Theater, they're going to show um, these works on their digital board outside of their, out of their um, building. But inside too, they're going to have um, other images of my works uh, on display there as well. I thought that was a, that's cool, cool opportunity. And then uh, this is my, one of my projects I had going for over a year now. I, when I first got that Hennepin Theater Trust um, uh, internship, it was for animation and it was, uh, kind of teaching us about um, how we could take our art and turn it into uh, something more and like I feel like 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 a lot of nfts have a little bit of animation and and like uh, I thought well I'm gonna make a piece of art and and then slowly work on it and so I made this piece called humblets and I wanted to make it where it's not, you don't really, if you're not in the know, you don't know what it really is. Oh, it's a big head with smoke around it. But if you know, then you know. And so I made it like when you're, when you're doing the ceremony, your eyes are closed and you're praying. And then I thought what would have been cool is like at the time when I was making it, what if his eyes open and what if you, he's moving around and he looks at you and I was like, that'd be so cool, it'd be trippy. And a year later, then I created this off of that. And hopefully it moves. Nope, it didn't move. Sorry, it's the first time I'm using Keynote. I could try it again, hold on, let me see. Hopefully we can get it. Yeah, there we go. And so we animated it, make him move, make the smoke feel like it's moving on him. And this is my first try at animation. And let me say it's super hard. <laughs> and I'm like teaching myself. So it's like a year of me figuring out what, what to do. And our little cohort meetings that are like a half an hour of them like trying to fit all of their knowledge into my little brain. <laughs> I was like, all right, this is what I got. I think it came out great. And possibility of that going to be uh, NFT. Oh, look, you could just hover it and click it to play. If I knew that, I just did that. But yeah, so I think it came out cool. I'm excited to try out animating more 
of my projects. And uh, John Thunder, I got to give a big shout out to John Thunder and him uh, helping me and, and pushing me to, to push my art a little bit further than it is. And he has a cool piece in uh, the Minneapolis airport of his animation. So I got to see it in person and it was really amazing. Uh, yeah, so if you look up John Thunder too, he's cool. Yeah, uh, I think that's all that I have on my works that I've done. And uh, I wanted to push, uh, if you're a high school student or um, even looking to go back to school, like non-traditional, I was non-traditional. And um, I think go, whenever you're thinking about going back to school, you should go really consider going to OLC for their graphic design. It really taught me a lot about not only just graphic arts and designing logos, but it got me into painting and uh, got me into doing a lot of other things like pushing myself outside my comfort zone, really trying to be an artist and not just being an artist on the internet, like putting myself out there at shows and, and taking these internships. So well, I wanna encourage people that are thinking about going to school to think about looking into OLC's graphic design program. It's really great. Yeah, that's all I have. Cool, thank you, Ray. That, I know you had some affirmation on the Facebook Live um, Maya Angie said, whoa, awesome movement. Um, it was really cool. I'd love to see more, more of your animation work as you expand that skill set. Um, I know you just talked about um, going to school at OLC, um, but do you want to touch a little bit on your, I know you just finished up a residency, last, was it last semester, um, fall semester? If you want to chat a little bit about that, I think it would be cool for people to hear. Yeah, so um, uh, Hawaii uh, residency at OLC with the graphic design program. I, uh, I just, I, I think I just finished the, the semester before in school and I seen it, uh, I seen they were looking for artists and I was like, I'm gonna throw my name in the hat and see what happens. And I got selected and I was like, jumped in the deep end and, and I was thinking, wow, what should I, what should I do with them? And I kind of didn't want it to make it about me. I kind of wanted to help students and what they were doing. And so I talked to Marty about uh, helping students create flyers, kind of to help other students uh, push them towards the graphic design program. And so we did uh, two students, Marina Moon and Delena Uses Knife, uh, created two flyers. And uh, we have those flyers uh, hanging up at Little Wound for students. But it's uh, all, all illustrator. And uh, I think I have them. Up. Let, me, let me double check and I'll show you guys them. They, they look awesome. Uh, Morena's is the Badlands. And it's like, it's like, it's amazing. Because Illustrator, if, if you work on Illustrator, you know how hard it is to work through Illustrator, uh, through all my messy files. Uh, while you're looking to, are there, where can people contact you? We have some comments on Facebook of how, um, if they want to commission a logo, also questions if you do web design. Uh, I do logos. Uh, I can do web design. Do I like to do web design? Not really. <laughs> uh, I, I'm on Instagram. I'm working on my website right now to uh, rayjanice.com and that should be out within the month. And uh, I, I guess I could do web design. I guess it just depends. I don't, I don't like to do it. It's just, it's something that's uh, time consuming. Cool. I shared out your Instagram. Did you find the their flyers? No, I'm I'm trying to find them, but 
I think is so unorganized. If you're a graphic designer, like <laughs> I, I, anything, I put folders and then I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'll be like, all right, I'm gonna make this folder so I know all my stuff goes here. And then I'll turn around and then I'll put stuff somewhere else. So I'll make another folder. So I'm just going through my folders trying to find it real quick. I know I had it because I was thinking about putting it in the slideshow. And for some reason, I did not do it. Uh, while you're still looking, do you want to talk about um, who were the artists that you looked up to? And do you remember, like in high school, like what you remember seeing versus like mm -hmm. what you're hoping to do now? Yeah. So uh, in high school, I wasn't thinking about art. I was like, uh, I wanted to every every best boy's dream, right? To go play college basketball <laughs> and live the ball is life dream. And I went to college and played basketball for the traveling team and realized this is hard. And I'm not the greatest player in the world to probably make it next level. And so I really focused on school. But one artist that I remember. Uh, seeing a lot of his work was Richard Redow. And uh, I really, I, I was like, when I see his work, I was really inspired about how like straight his line work was and how stuff looked like almost like dreamscape. And it wasn't until I went back to school and did uh, art appreciation that I learned that he got his style from Oscar Howe. And, and I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then and like talking to him now, like really being in art and visiting him, it's just like, I should have, I should have just been doing this a long time ago and, and instead of waiting, but life's life, where you at, where you at. But I remember him, um, non-Indigenous uh, artist, um, Keith Herring. I think we all had those uh, those drawings of his his like stick figure drawings, shirts, uh, how it's so commercialized. Um, and then it wasn't until later that I like I found Basquiat and start really looking into his work. And then another native artist, T.C. Kooning, I really like his work. It's real bright and pops a lot. Um, so these are like the artists that inspire me. And like now, like being in, like going to shows and seeing other artists, like Wade Patton, his his art's amazing. And on the second he's selling stuff, so I'm hoping that I I make it in time <laughs> to buy a piece because <laughs> I really want one of his pieces. And uh, yeah, I've I've been stashing away money for one of his pieces. And then uh, uh, Melina Joe Parker and uh, Brian Parker, their artwork's cool. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of artists, man. Like, I think if you, if, I think once you go to like, uh, like these shows and you see like, there's so many great artists that are like right in our backyard here. And I, I think it's amazing and getting to meet them too, it's cool. Yeah, I agree. I really, um, I just finally scored one of Wade's ledger pieces and I was so excited. Um, but it was because it was on sale. <laughs> but yeah, I really um, appreciate it. My Aunt Angie also put, she thinks your work is fantastic. Um, it's really good to know you're out here representing. So some affirmation from Facebook. And then I found I found the flyers okay, too. Cool. It only takes me forever to find stuff. All right. So this first one is um, Delena's. And can you see it? Yeah. All yeah. Right, this one is uh, she really does this cool Disney style artwork where it's like um, it looks like fun and whimsical. And she's like, all right. Oh. The first one she showed was like, it was like a ball, but it looked like a medicine wheel. And then so that's what I thought she was working on. And then she comes back and like blows my mind away with this one. So it looks like an iPad 
and you're like drawing your thing on it and and asking kids to come be a part of this after I thought that was amazing and I told her yeah sign it sign it so they know who the artist is so they know that these aren't just off the wall some guy you don't know these are actually people from your community so that's one and let me show you this other one and this other one's cool too and this one is uh oh, does it come up yeah yeah so that, this one's uh rain and moons and this is all done in illustrator and if you guys ever did illustrator you know how time consuming it is and how long it takes and if i tried to do this <laughs> it'd probably take me about a good month to get all of those colors with uh with the badlands of the changing and then to get that little fog in the background with the moon and i thought this one came out so cool and uh and on top of it she did um everyone else was just um getting the image of olc and slapping it on there and calling it good and it's fine like cool and whenever i opened her file this is all she did all of this the the olc logo and marty and me told her like you should contact them because i bet you could sell <laughs> that back to them to have the vector file because I know like whenever I went to school there and I'd ask for files, they'd send me like blurry pixelated JPEGs, but like this is this, you could blow it up as big as you want, make it as small as you want. But yeah, I love both of them, how they turned out. I think they turned out really cool. And uh, both of them are great artists. I think uh, after, after um, the program ended, um, I followed Delane on, uh, Instagram and she got a, a gig working with Nickelodeon as a student. So she's like, uh, she said she's helping pitch ideas and and illustrations, which I think is amazing. And Delena is still doing amazing. I mean, uh, Marina is still doing amazing uh, paintings as well. And I, I think it's just amazing, like our, our talented artists here right on our, our res. Yeah, that was that's really exciting. I um that other one looked like a Star Wars. What is the moon? I can't even think right now. My brain is yeah. just um, but it right if like an animated tattooing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's the bad lens, but it looks yeah. that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, um, she said that I was just like, wow, like and then like I click through stuff and like like everything's done. Like it's not no not just no stock image, that's all of her image that she made, which is amazing. Both of them, both of them are amazing. Both of them are all their images. That's and that's the cool thing about uh, doing graphic design because you don't have to go out. And... I remember when I was doing like my album covers a long time ago in the early 2000s, in the 1900s, <laughs> like if I wanted like a skull, I would have to go find that skull and everybody probably had that same skull and 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 once I realized like what you can do with Illustrator and like you could create your own images, you could create your own text, uh, I think uh, it really opened up my world to, to art. But yeah, it's amazing, man. Awesome. I know we just were almost at time, but I just Thank you, Ray, for sharing your journey. And I think um, I thought your title is very apt because, again, like we were chatting beforehand, um, I think what the Western world sees as art is very different than I think what we see as art. And I really appreciate your work for having such a cultural grounding, um, even though it's all graphic and all, most of it is online or, you know, through a digital platform. Um, but it still looks and feels very Lakota. So I really appreciate you sharing that that aspect of your work. Um, do you have any closing thoughts or comments? Mm, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to put that out there too. Like uh, I've heard that before about, uh, um, I, I did a project before and they said, uh, make it Lakota. 
And I was all like, uh, well, if I do it, and I, no matter what I do, it's going to be Lakota because I'm Lakota. And so I think other artists, like we, we got to like push our own boundaries that Lakota is not just um, our old, old ways of, of doing things. And, and when you think about it too, like a, a lot of our art's been taken from us and put in museums and, and fashion designers as well as other people are taking our images and flipping them to fit them but it's all in us and and i just i just want to encourage everyone that if you're an artist and you and you're worried about is this image represent my culture well that you're lakota or you're indigenous that it, it no matter what it's going to be indigenous i, I love that no matter what, it's going to be indigenous. I appreciate that. Uh, well, thank you for everyone that joined us. I thought most of our audience was on Facebook Live. It was just me and Ray hanging out here in the Zoom room. Um, but thank you all who joined us on Facebook Live. Also, please share out this video. It'll be accessible through the Racing, Mag web, Racing Magpie website as well as um, other our other platforms. So be sure to share, share out Ray's conversation. I think it's really important, especially for those who are interested in graphic arts. And once again, just thank you, Ray. Um, and I hope everyone has a good evening.